Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to the vlog. So I thought I'd start this morning off with a little bit of a showcase of the separate components of the can filler. Here we have it on the floor, pretty much, um, well in its component parts, this here is the, uh, the fill rail, as you'll be familiar with, with the um, fill tubes on there. We've anchored the fill tubes, which is a new little bit welded these um, collars on if that's what you could call them and that's allowed me to insert the fill tubes and prevent them from moving up and down and also they have been welded on one side so they still function uh, yeah we've uh, had all the steel apart uh, last night for some pickling paste treatment to kind of clean these welds up a little bit so it looks a bit neater and uh, tidier around where we've scorched it a touch so that's the fill carriage treated and ready to go back into action I've also deburred all the edges and then down here on the floor after having a rinse in fact there's still some pickling paste just there look so we better get that off this morning but uh, yeah, here we have uh, a little addendum that we've added on. This little frame here holds the control panel. And uh, down the bottom, we've got the can push ram on its little kind of gimbal so we can change that around in order to uh, move the position of the ram backwards and forwards and up and down. And then in order for us to get a different setting in terms of how far forwards the cans will be pushed, we've got this little contraption here, which is adjustable on a tilt axis backwards and forwards like this with these two bolts. And then by varying the size of this bolt, we can uh, set the start point of where the can push mechanism is going to come from. Uh, we've got the bolts in the top of these pneumatic cylinders they were bodged for a moment just for prototyping so all we need to do is pop that carriage back into the chassis and then install all of the uh, electrical components I brought the laptop in this morning we're going to do a bit of prototyping to make sure that the code and everything's right and then we can go from there and maybe at the end of the day we'll see this little beauty in action so uh, before we do that, let's go and have a look at the control panel. So we've got the control panel on the side in here and I've obviously taken off all of the, uh, what do you call it, solenoid rail. So we've got the solenoids on the back of this uh, piece of um, PVC and here are the feed lines which loop round and over the top. And then here we have the panel. So what I've gone for on the panel is uh, black and white, uh, black and red speaker cable, just sending the 12 volts to the uh, associated solenoids. We've got a bit of braided flex coming in here with 240 volts. That just powers the on and off switch, this light, and then the 12 volt power transformer inside and then everything else is 12 volts uh, on the side here we've managed to install the potentiometer so when we've set the sensor probes up and we want to ignore the foam but detect the beer in each can we can dial in the sensitivity for those probes so they'll trigger at a certain point meaning that the current carrying capacity or voltage carrying capacity of the foam is always less than that of the beer because it's a less dense substrate so by fluctuating this here we can effectively dial it out I also took some advice and installed a USB port into the side that goes straight, straight into the Arduino which means we can troubleshoot and change the code on the fly without having to open the box up and then everything else works as it should. We've got another three cables to bring out here which will loop round over the top and go onto the uh, fill rail 
another point worth mentioning on the fill rail front is we may have to electronically isolate each rail individually from the chassis there maybe just the fibre washer underneath those two sections or underneath the bolt, we'll see how it goes uh, but we may have to do that to avoid any false triggering by one can sensor setting off the other if you know where I'm coming from so that's something that we'll be tackling today right I've uh, pretty much got the whole setup uh, cleaned set up ready to do some prototype testing what do I keep saying prototype I don't know anyway uh, there was a lot of troubleshooting to be done we had one of these solenoids kind of being finicky wouldn't close off thought it was an issue with the code at first it wasn't so the setup that we've got here is a bucket full of beer don't worry it's off beer and uh, we've got the compressor ready to go the airline is hooked up into the back of the machine and uh, we've got some glasses on there which are representing cans excuse the noise in the background it's a windy day today and the shutters are rattling around so uh, what I've managed to do is get some welding rods they're insulated from the rest they're running through a little bit of 5 16 pipe down to the bottom and then we come out here slightly uh, just to give us a gap so bubbles will break if any form on the actual um, probe itself and then we've got uh, 5 volts on I believe the fill tube which is coupled across all of these and then we've got ground on the sensor I think that's the way we've wired it up might be the wrong way around if it is I don't know anyway that's what I've done so far and uh, yeah we might change that to 5 volts on the sensor no that wouldn't work then because when it went across the ground that meant everything would get a signal wouldn't it on the uh, yeah your sensor has to be ground and the chassis has to be 5 volts there we go so let's run a sequence hopefully it goes pretty smoothly I've tried to set the levels up here so they all turn off at the same time now the fill speeds a little bit slow I've got a pond pump in there uh, but I don't think the tubing's big enough so let's just check that this turns off as and when it should wonderful wonderful and for the last one Oh, you little beauty. And then that's it. We've got three beers. And if we come down to the level, well, you know what that'll do for me. We do have the occasional drip, but surface tension is doing a good job of holding the beer in the lines. And obviously, if I was here canning, then uh, I wouldn't have to empty these glasses and put them back to the start we'd just be able to go right ahead and press the start button again and then let's have a look top view at the fill so yeah they do have a bit of a preferential um, tendency to fill these two first and that one last maybe it's just how they're configured I don't know and again let's just get in there see that probe working very nice oh, you know what I can't ask for much more than that really can I folks so there we are it might be a diff bit difficult to make it out because I've not got the best backdrop for it but uh, she works she friggin' works. So all I want to do now is hook up this uh, mag drive pump for the beer. We're not going to be using a pond pump, obviously. The pond pump there is going to look like that in a bucket of Persid 5, 
or PAA paracetic acid and that's what we're just going to pre-rinse the cans with just a quick blast of PAA to sanitize them and uh, yeah when they come out on this end the can seamer is going to be around here hopefully we'll have a little sink as well to dip them in with a bit more PAA and then they'll go on to uh, a pallet to dry and then we'll label them after we've filled them all she works though a bit more playing to do anyway and uh, well maybe I'll catch you tomorrow when we've got a little bit further down the line and uh, give you another update but there we go folks uh, as always thanks for watching don't forget to sub and if you want some more info about this project then please visit the links in the description below and they'll take you to the relevant website pages to find out how to build your own. And also a massive thanks to everybody who's contributed in terms of pointing me in the right direction for hardware, and particularly the lads behind the scenes who have helped me code that machine. Thank you all very much.